So the next topic we want to talk about is inequalities, statistical inequalities and of course, one we have already seen which is the cauchy schwarz inequality, but um, uh, there are some other important ones which we will talk about now. Now, the uh, role of inequalities uh, is that uh, you get bounds on probabilities of certain events and uh, this is different from approximations, because uh, the inequalities make a very definite statement. So, it is a definite fact about randomness. So, you have some event and you want to, uh, you are able to say that the probability <coughs> of this event will be uh, less than or equal to a definite number. So, you give a bound right? or lower bound, upper bound, whatever is possible. Uh, mostly, we will see that we talk about uh, upper, uh, low, uh, upper bounds. So, um, and of course, uh, another thing is that this is different, the inequalities give you information which is different from approximations, right? because approximations may be good, bad, but here uh, the inequality is trying to tell you okay, the probability of a certain event is less than this particular number, right? which the approximation does not say. Pro approximation says that okay, uh, the probability may be this. right? and then uh, depending on. So, uh, therefore, uh, they have a very definite role to play the inequalities um, in your statistical analysis of data and so on. So, uh, see what happens is that when in the absence of much knowledge about the distribution of sample values, you take uh, different kinds of samples and then you, you do not know much about uh, the uh, distribution of the population from which you are uh, taking the samples. And then uh, to derive bounds for probabilities of events you know depending on the uh, sample values uh, is very, is very helpful and that's what we do through these inequalities right so in fact it may just happen that we may know uh, the mean or the variance of the uh, uh, the population from which the sample values are coming and that's it we may not know the nature of the uh, distribution exactly so then uh, it helps to be able to uh, uh, compute the compute bounds on the uh, uh, probabilities of certain events. Okay. So, the first one uh, simple one is Markov inequality and this uh, the statement is that if x is a random variable that takes only non negative values, then for any real number a greater than 0, probability x greater than or equal to a is less than or equal to expected x upon a. And this is not difficult to prove because if you know you define this indicator variable where variable so which is which takes value 1 when x is greater than or equal to a and 0 otherwise right so that means um, uh, yeah so uh, now uh, when you write x greater than or equal to a this implies that 1 is less than or equal to x by a that is and since i is equal to 1 whenever x is uh, yeah, so that means I can write uh, that i is less than or equal to x by a. Now, taking expectation of both sides, so when I take expectation of both sides, um, I get expectation i, which is less than or equal to expectation x by a. But expectation x by a is one by a expectation x, right? So uh, this I'm just relating the two random variables i and x. Uh, so this is one by a this, and expectation i would be because this is i is equal to 1 with probability x greater than or equal to a. So, the expectation would be uh, uh, 1 into probability x greater than or equal to a plus x equal to i equal to 0 into probability that um, x is less than a. So, but since uh, i is 0, so that is no contribution. So, expectation i is actually equal to probability x greater than or equal to a into 1. Right. And uh, where did we use um, the fact that it is a non negative variable? I used it from here saying that if i is less than or equal to x by a, then the expectation will also when I take the expectation of both sides, the inequality will remain intact and therefore, uh, this is less than or equal to 1 by a e x or probability x greater than or equal to a is less than or equal to 1 upon a into expected x. 
So, you see if for this event just knowing uh, that uh, just knowing the expectation of the random variable, I can compute a bound for uh, the, uh, the probability of this event, which is given by 1 by a into e x. So, let us look at this Chebyshev's inequality, which says that if x is a random variable with finite mean mu and variance sigma square, then for any k positive expectation of x minus mu absolute value greater than or equal to k, sorry it should not be expect probability. We are uh, Chebyshev's uh, inequality is for uh, giving an upper bound on a uh, certain probability, which is probability absolute value of x minus mu greater than or equal to k is less than or equal to sigma square upon k square. So, mean uh, uh, x has mu as its mean. So, when you take, uh, so actually this can also be written as expectation of x minus mu whole square and then divided by k square. So, that is the variance. Okay. And of course, I do not need the absolute sign once I am taking square. So, it, this is actually expectation of whatever the function here. So, you were taking x minus mu. So, expectation of this whole square divided by k square. So, we are uh, defining this for uh, mu as the mean of x and uh, k is some positive number. So, the, this is the inequality. So, that means, this gives you a bound, uh, the inequality gives a bound on this probability, which has to be less than or equal to sigma square by k square. Now, we will use Markov's inequality to prove this. We just established Markov's inequality. So, now uh, let me define y as x minus mu whole square and this will be therefore, non-negative and the Markov's inequality requires uh, is defined for um, is valid for um, a random variable, which takes only non-negative values, which is uh, greater than or equal to 0 and we will take a to be k square. Okay. And so, then um, uh, the Markov inequality will give us that probability x minus mu whole square greater than or equal to k square is less than or equal to expectation of x minus mu whole square by k square, right? expectation of this divided by uh, k square e x. So, this is e x by a, where this is a and this is your x. So, then um, I am writing expectation my x is x minus mu whole square. So, expectation of x minus mu whole square by k square. Right. So, by uh, Markov's inequality this this and then you are saying because my a is k square and my um, x is x minus mu whole square. Right. Now, uh, just see that this event x minus mu whole square greater than or equal to k square holds if and only if this holds for uh, since k is give, taken to be positive. So, um, if this is true, then this is true. If this is true, then this must be true. Okay. So, if they are the same events and therefore, I can replace this probability by the probability absolute value of x minus mu greater than or equal to k. This is less than or equal to sigma square by k square. So, the inequality is established and then we will uh, uh, through examples and so, we will see the various uh, ways in which uh, this simple inequality can be uh, used. Now, the thing is another just want to make a note here that often we are asked to obtain a bound for a probability like this, which has a strict inequality. So, this is probability of x minus mu absolute value of x minus mu greater than k, right. But then we know that uh, this probability is less than or equal to probability of absolute value of x minus mu greater than or equal to k, right because you are taking a bigger subset here. So, this probability is uh, this probability is bigger than this probability and hence and since we have a bound for this through Chebyshev's inequality. So, the bound is also valid for uh, this probability. right? So, that means, we can say that probability uh, mod x minus mu greater than k is also less than or equal to sigma square by k square. This is the whole idea and uh, through uh, when we discuss many examples, it will turn out that we have to actually compute this uh, a bound for this probability. And so, we will see that uh, this can be um, uh, this can be um, uh, again estimated by uh, I am not I should not use the word estimate, because this probability is less than or equal to this and Chebyshev's inequality gives us a bound for this. So, therefore, the same bound is valid for this probability also. Now, um, one, one can also obtain a, um, 
alternate, I mean one can, uh, there, there, there are more than one ways of uh, obtaining these inequalities. And so, I will just give you the alternate proof, uh, which says that uh, if, um, so I will start with the uh, expression for sigma square, which is expectation of x minus mu whole square. right? So, uh, you are taking k on either side. So, now I can break and this integral will be uh, minus infinity to infinity of x minus mu whole square f x d x. So, this integral I break up into. So, minus infinity to mu minus k that means, this point and uh, uh, then it will be uh, mu minus k to mu plus k and then mu plus k to infinity. Okay. So, I break up the integral. So, the total integral minus infinity to infinity, I break it up to these three. Right. Now, if you look at uh, uh, this expression for example, um, here x is greater than mu plus k, Right? it is going up to infinity and remember k is a positive number. So, um, x greater than mu plus k implies that your x minus mu is greater than k. Right. So, it actually uh, this is implied so, if this uh, wherever x is greater than mu plus k, it means that x minus mu is greater than k and similarly, here your x is less than mu minus k. So, for x less than mu minus k, it implies that your x minus mu is less than minus k. right? And um, this is a, because again um, this is uh, you know x minus mu whole square, you are integrating x minus mu whole square f x d x from mu minus k to mu plus k. So, this must be a non negative quantity, right. It cannot be negative, uh, because this is non negative, this is non negative. And so, uh, uh, therefore, uh, the equality, if I remove this, then the inequality changes to inequality. And uh, secondly, uh, as we said that in this interval, mu plus k to infinity x minus mu is greater than k. right? And so, here again f x is a non negative function. So, if I replace this by k square, then I am taking a lower value of the whole integral. right? So, again the inequality gets strengthened and similarly here your uh, x minus mu is less than, uh, I mean x is less than, x minus mu is less than k in this interval also minus infinity to mu minus k, your x minus mu is less than minus k. So, square would be, what will happen to square? x minus mu whole square will become greater than k square. right? In this interval again, uh, because x minus mu is less than minus k. So, when I square up, x minus mu whole square will be greater than k square. So, then um, if uh, for in both these integrals, I replace x minus mu whole square by k square, I am taking the lower value of um, the uh, so underestimate of the integral and therefore, uh, sigma square is greater than or equal to k square of um, f x d x, this is minus infinity to mu minus k plus uh, integral mu plus k to infinity k square f x d x. Okay. But this is nothing but k square of course, is a constant. So, this is probability x less than or equal to mu minus k plus this is probability x greater than or equal to mu plus k mu plus k to infinity. But then, if you bring um, mu to this side, this will be probability x minus mu less than or equal to minus k. Here, this will be probability x minus mu greater than or equal to k. So, probability of absolute value of x minus mu greater than or equal to k. So, uh, what is written is the strict inequality, but it should actually be probability of mod x minus mu greater than or equal to k. So, we have the inequality sigma square greater than or equal to k square probability of absolute value of x minus mu greater than q k. And so, that gives us the inequality that we wanted to prove. Uh, so, this is the Chebyshev's inequality. This again gives you an uh, upper bound on the uh, probability mod x minus mu greater than or equal to k. Once we know the variance of the random variable x. Okay. So, this proof can be imitated for the discrete case also, that is when x is a discrete random variable with finite variance and there will be a p uh, with probability mass function also defined with it. And um, uh, immediate corollary is that if you put k equal to epsilon sigma, where of course, epsilon is some non negative number, then um, 
the Chebyshev's inequality becomes greater than or equal to epsilon sigma. This is less than or equal to sigma square upon epsilon sigma square, which is 1 by epsilon square. And if I uh, divide here by sigma, sigma being a non-negative num positive number. So, um, inequality does not change and probability x minus mu by sigma. So, this is you can say a standardized uh, variable, we have standardized the variable x. So, this greater than or equal to epsilon is less than or equal to 1 upon epsilon square, a, a simple version of the simpler version of the Chebyshev's inequality. So, we would like to now uh, uh, work out some examples to see how uh, these bounds can be used. Okay. So, let us consider a few examples on this inequalities that we have just uh, discussed. Uh, this example says that x is a random variable with mean and variance both equal to 16. So, compute a lower bound on uh, probability that x lies between 0 and 32 using Chebyshev's inequality, because here we cannot use uh, Markov's inequality, right. It is a two sided thing and um, uh, yes and again um, uh, yeah, fine, yeah. So, therefore, um, we will use the Chebyshev's inequality here. The solution of, uh, says that you convert this probability to um, probability of 0 minus 6. So, it just divides uh, subtract 16 from uh, both the sides. So, it will be probability 0 minus 16 less than x minus 16, uh, which is less than 32 minus 16. So, the two events are the same and uh, then this reduces to probability of absolute x minus 16 is less than 16, right. This is minus 16 and this is 16. So, absolute. So, now this is in the form of, uh, well, okay, this is the uh, con, uh, opposite of the uh, what we, uh, we comp uh, compute the lower bound for greater, uh, right. So, now here I will have to write this as 1 minus probability absolute x minus 16 greater than or equal to 16, right. Yeah, we had strict inequality here. So, this was strict and therefore, uh, the opposite event would be uh, the converse or the complement event would be absolute x minus 16 greater than or equal to 16, right. And uh, uh, since uh, Chebyshev's inequality gives us a lower bound, so therefore, when I uh, write down uh, uh, sorry gives an upper bound. So, when I replace this by its upper bound minus of that will become. So, uh, smaller. So, the inequality, the equality here will change to uh, greater kind, right, because I am writing, um, see this is, uh, for this I am writing a bigger number, but the minus will become a smaller number and therefore, uh, this uh, probability will be greater than or equal to 1 minus expectation of x minus 16 whole square divided by 16 square, but this we know is um, uh, the variance of uh, x, which is 16. So, therefore, this is 1 minus 16 upon 16 square and so this is 15 by 16 and you can see that it is a fairly loose bound. Uh, so, 15 by 16 is a number close to 1. Yes, and there will be, okay, but anyway, so uh, trying to show you that uh, these bounds that you get are uh, rather loose, uh, they are not very tight but at, uh, at some situations they are quite helpful also. Okay. Now, another example is uh, from, past, from past experience, a professor knows that the test score of a student taking her final exam is a random variable with mean 65. Okay, that is not bad. If the mean is 65, then out of 100, then okay, uh, students are good. Uh, so, let us see, give, give an upper bound for the probability that a student's test, test score will exceed 85. So, you need an upper bound for the probability. So, therefore, we just know uh, that the mean is 65 and that is it and uh, using that we compute. So, here you will um, uh, to answer this, you will simply use uh, Markov's inequality and uh, that will give you um, a probability x greater than 85. So, your a is 85 and so this will be less than or equal to expectation x upon 85, which will be 65 upon 85. So, 13 by 7. Now, Markov's inequality says that probability x greater than or equal to a is less than or equal to expected x by a, but we can also use this um, Markov's inequality for computing an upper bound for the event 
x for the uh, for the probability of the event x greater than a. Since a uh, probability x greater than a is less than or equal to probability x greater than or equal to a. So, therefore, uh, probability x greater than a will be less than or equal to expected value of x divided by a. So, therefore, when to compute the uh, upper bound for the probability x greater than 85, I could use the number uh, E x divided by 85. And this is what we will use uh, for the for future computations also that follow. So, this is uh, the answer that you get from Markov's inequality. Now, um, if there is an additional information that the um, professor knows that the variance of a student's test score is equal to 20. So, if you have knowledge of the uh, variance, uh, then uh, you can use uh, Chebyshev's inequality and then you will say that probability absolute x minus 65 is greater than 20. So, this probability will be less than or equal to expectation of x minus 65 whole square upon 20 square, because this is your k. So, that is 20 square and therefore, um, since we know that the variance of x is uh, x obviously is the test score. So, then um, that is 20. So, 20 upon 20 square this is 1 by 20. Of course, the numbers are a little contrived does not matter. So, the, the and then uh, see the, the this event is actually probability x minus 65 greater than 20. Either this is greater than 20 or this is less than minus 20. So, uh, and you were looking for this probability, but in any case this is uh, probability uh, x minus six, uh, x is uh, less than 45 right so i could write plus here because the two events are disjoint so uh, so in other words if you want a bound for probability x minus 65 x x um, yeah yeah so this this will give you a probability x greater than 85 uh, plus probability x less than 45 which is 1 by 20 so in other words your probability x greater than 85 is less than or equal to 1 by 20, because this will be something positive. So, you will subtract from 1 by 20. So, therefore, uh, this bound is definitely, I mean there is a dramatic difference between uh, 13 by 7 and the number which is 1 by 20. So, uh, you see the moment you have more information about the uh, distribution about the random variable, uh, you can get better bounds for the, uh, the bounds are tighter. Okay. So, this was just um, I think I just sat down and contrived these numbers and though, so they may not be look very realistic, uh, because 20 is uh, probably a, a high number for the variance and therefore, uh, uh, so therefore, there is a dramatic change, because you see this this had no knowledge of the variance. So, I just computed this. So, this number we computed knowing the expected value. So, if here the variance is much smaller then obviously, this probability will also be uh, the this bound will be uh, higher. Okay, fine. So, um, uh, this is just to show you that uh, the difference between the two bounds. Okay. Now, uh, the second part of the problem is that how many students will have to take the exam to ensure with probability at least 0.9 that the class average would be within 5 of 65. So, how many students? So, suppose we assume that there are n students who are taking the exam, right, and then uh, the class average would be given by. So, uh, class average would be uh, uh, summation x i, i varying from 1 to n divided by n, right, which um, in our notation we can also write as x bar. So, that will be your class average. And so, what they are saying is that the class average which should be within 5 of 65. So, it is either 5 less than 65 or 5 more than 65. So, therefore, uh, this class average should be within 60 and 70. So, this is the probability that you have to. Um, uh, so, then you are told that this probability uh, should be um, at least 0.9 and then you want to know how many students should take the exam. So, that uh, this probability is at least uh, 0.9, that means it is greater than or equal to 0.9. So, um, here again I am trying to standardize uh, or get it in the form of the uh, Chebyshev's inequality. So, we will, uh, so x bar minus 65 
right, because mu of x bar is uh, the expected value of x bar is also 65, since each x i is. So, therefore, uh, this will be 60 minus 65 less than or equal to x bar minus 65 less than or equal to 70 minus 65. Okay. And then, um, um, I can also here uh, divide by. So, what is the uh, variance of uh, okay, here um, variance x bar will be uh, a variance of each x uh, any of the x i is the same divided by um, n. Right. So, because n uh, variance x i is divided by n square. So, this becomes this and so under root of this. So, that will be um, under root of 20 by n. So, if I divide both sides by under root of 20 by n, the uh, inequality the event does not change. So, this is what I have now and this is 1 minus probability x bar minus 65 upon under root 20 by n. And, um, so, this uh, gives me uh, so that means, now this is my uh, uh, I mean applying Chebyshev's inequality here, this is greater than 5 by under root 20 by n. So, this would be uh, uh, by uh, again uh, because uh, I am writing 1 minus of this. So, uh, if you have less here that means, this is le this is less than some number by Chebyshev's inequality. So, minus that will become greater and so this is uh, uh, 20 by n into 25, right? Because uh, uh, what is the? Uh, have I written it correctly here? So uh, you want to by Chebyshev's inequality, this would be what? This is this number. If I just write this number, this is less than or equal to expectation of x bar minus 65 upon uh, 20 by n this whole square divided by uh, you can say uh, 25 n by 20. right? But uh, this has variance 1. So, actually it should be yes. So, see this is this has variance 1 right, because I have standardized it. So, uh, expectation x bar minus 65 upon under root 20 by n whole square has variance 1. So, the number is uh, 20 upon n 25, right. And so, uh, and so this uh, should be and this is greater than or equal to. So, my probability and therefore, if I put this equal to 0 0.9, then my uh, this at least part is satisfied, right. And so, um, so the value of n that gives me this quantity equal to 0 0.9 will satisfy, because the probability the, uh, the, the probability that I have written on the left hand side is greater than or equal to this. 20 upon 25 n equal to 0 0.1 implies n is equal to 8 and not 80 as written. Therefore, for n greater than or equal to 8, the class average will be within 5 of 65. So, uh, you know lots of uh, different kinds of probabilities you can obtain via uh, you know using the Chebyshev's inequality, you can get the bounds, you can get estimates of the numbers and so on. Okay. So, let us consider this example. Uh, it says that it costs rupees 1 to play a slot machine. See, now some of you have an idea that you, uh, you uh, put in 1 rupee and then uh, if you are lucky some money comes out, otherwise nothing comes out. So, the machine is set by the house. So, wherever your this uh, slot machine is put, uh, the uh, machine is set to pay rupees 2 with probability 0 0.45 and nothing with probability 0.55. So, you see you put in a rupee and then with probability 0 0.45 you expect to get 2 rupees, otherwise uh, with the probability 0 0.55 you do not expect to get anything. So, you lose that rupee. Fine. So, find approximate probability that after 10,000 plays of the machine, the house's winnings are between rupees 800 and rupees 1200. Hmm. So, you see um, winnings means that when uh, the house has to pay uh, to the uh, player, then it is losing. So, uh, since uh, when the player puts in 1 rupee and uh, the house has to pay 2 rupees, then that is a loss for the house. So, therefore, uh, x i is equal to minus 1 is with probability 0 0.45 and x i is equal to 1 with probability 0. So, this represents the earning of the uh, machine. 
uh, you know in the ith play of the game when the uh, uh, slot machine is being played for the ith time. So, x i is equal to minus 1 with probability 0.45 and this is 1 with probability uh, 0.55. And of course, um, you can see that E x i the expected value of x i will be minus 1 into 4 0.45 plus 1 into 55. So, this is 0.1 as you expect, because otherwise why would uh, uh, people or house want to uh, invest money in a slot machine, if the expected earning is not uh, positive. So, this is 0.1 per per game of the uh, slot machine. right? And similarly, the variance x i would be 0 0.99, because it will be expectation x i square. So, once you put x i square, then this will become plus 1 into 0 0.45 plus 1 into 0 0.55, which will be 1. So, expectation x i square is 1 and then expectation x i whole square will be 0 0.1 square. So, this becomes 0 0.99. So, the variance of each x i is 0.99 and earnings of the house are represented, total earnings are 1 to, uh, 1 to 10,000. Right. So, sigma x i uh, uh, you know, summation from 1 to 10,000 gives you the earnings of the house in which you know losses and uh, uh, income are all included. The net, net income, the net earning of the house is sigma x i, i varying from 1 to 10,000. And so, um, uh, expected value of the earnings is rupees uh, 1000, right? Because this is um, 0 0.1, 0 0.1 multiplied by 10,000, which gives you rupees 1000. And the variance sigma xi is 9900. Uh, 9900. Now, I have not standardized this thing here, it is ok to carry on the uh, computations uh, with these values. So, now to we have to compute the probability that um, total earnings of the uh, house lie between rupees 800 and 1200. Okay. So, here again we will do the same thing, we will try to standardize this uh, uh, probability and so uh, I will subtract the expected value of sigma x i, which is 1000 rupees on uh, either side. And so, that gives me that uh, uh, absolute of sigma x i, i varying from 1 to 10000 minus 1000 is less than 200. So, again we have it in the right form, in the sense that um, now I will write this as 1 minus probability <coughs> um, sigma x i, i varying from 1 to 10000 minus 1000 should be greater than or equal to so, it is saying between 800 and 1200. So, I am taking strict inequality here. So, therefore, <coughs> the complement event will have greater than or equal to 200. So, I have set it right for the Shebi, for the use of uh, Chebyshev's inequality. So, again the same reasoning that uh, this thing is less than I get a lower upper bound. So, therefore, minus of that will give me the uh, lower bound. Uh, so, minus of that. So, therefore, um, uh, this will be uh, this is less than or equal to uh, variance of x i sigma x i uh, divided by 200 square. So, variance of sigma x i is uh, 90 see remember this is 9900. 9, so, therefore, this is greater than or equal to 1 minus 9900 upon 200 square, uh, which is equal to which is equal to 1 minus uh, 9900 upon uh, 40000 and so this becomes this yeah so again uh, that means uh, this close to 0.75 the probability uh, so you would expect that because 10000 plays and uh, you know the machine the expected value from each play of the machine is 0.1 expected earning so therefore uh, this is probably not a very bad bound. So, at least, so here of course, uh, the, the uh, probability is at least uh, 301 upon 400, it can be more. So, uh, it is it's understood that uh, the Chebyshev's uh, bounds are not very tight, but it gives you an idea. Okay. It gives you a feeling about the uh, probability of the event that you are trying to estimate. Okay. Um, another example, because I feel that uh, the, uh, there are so many different situations, where uh, you have to learn to how to compute 
the uh, how to make it, uh, how you can apply Shev Bishop's inequality and therefore, I just have collected a lot of uh, different examples. So, let us look at another example here, which says that a fair die is rolled um, and what we mean by uh, independently, independently three times, which means that uh, there is no bias and so, the outcomes are independent. So, uh, the outcomes of when the uh, die is rolled three times, whatever the outcomes are independent outcomes. Now, uh, we define x i as 1, uh, the i th roll yields a perfect square. right? So, um, x i denotes the random variable, which is equal to 1, if the i th roll gives me a perfect square and 0 otherwise. So, first find the p m f of x, x i and uh, I need to do all this work before I uh, apply the Chebyshev's inequality. So, um, uh, the p m f of x i and then uh, for y is equal to x 1 plus x 2 plus x 3, then you have to find the p m f of y and then verify Chebyshev's inequality. So, we will compute uh, the actual uh, probability and then also uh, 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 get the bound by the Chebyshev's inequality and compare. So, obviously, we expect that uh, since this gives us an upper bound. So, the actual probability that we compute will be less than what we get by the Chebyshev's inequality. This is the whole idea and I thought that uh, we can if you work out uh, in detail, you will uh, get a good feeling about the whole thing. So, anyway, so let us see the solution procedure. Uh, now, 1 and 4 are the only perfect squares uh, in the 6 numbers that uh, come up when a die is rolled. So, 1 and 4 are the only perfect squares and therefore, probability x i equal to 1 will be 2 by 6, which is 1 by 3 and probability x i equal to 0 will be 4 by 6, which is equal to 2 by 3 for all i and i's are all, so um, and x i's are independent. So, now you take y to be x 1 plus x 2 plus x 3 uh, and the y takes values 0, 1, 2 and 3, because um, none of the die show a perfect square. So, then this value is 0, one of them shows a perfect square, two of them show a perfect square or all three show a perfect square. So, the values, possible values of y are 0, 1, 2 and 3 and uh, not difficult to compute uh, the p m f of y, because y equal to 0 means that all three uh, variables take 0 value and since they are uh, independent, therefore, it will be product of uh, probability x 1 equal to 0, x 2 equal to 0 and so that and x 3 equal to 0. So, it will be 2 by 3 square, which is a cube. So, which is 8 by 27. right? Similarly, probability y equal to 1 uh, will be, see now here, uh, I just take this case that x 1 is 1 and x 2 and x 3 are 0, then there can be 3 such combinations, where one of them is 1 and the other 2 are 0. So, this will be 3 times this particular probability, which is uh, x again uh, using independence x 1 equal to 1 is 1 by 3. So, 3 times 1 by 3 into this is 2 by 3 raised to 2, which is 4 by 9. So, the probability is 12 by 27. and um, y equal to 2 again the same case that uh, if I take this particular uh, event x equal to 1 equal to x 2 and x 3 is 0, then again the 3 combinations which will give me the same value for y which is equal to 2. So, 3 times probability x 1 equal to 1 equal to x 2 and x 3 equal to 0. So, this will give me 3 into 1 by 9 into 2 by 3 x 3 equal which is 6 by 27 and probability y equal to 3 requires that all 3 must be equal to 1 and that probability will be 1 by 27. Now, you can just make sure that you have got computed the right p m f by adding up all these probabilities. So, 7 plus uh, 6 uh, 13, 13 plus 12 <coughs> have I done? Uh, this is 1 and 6, oh sorry, I am 1 and 6, 7, 7 and 12, uh, 7 and 12, 19, 19 and 8, 27. So, all these probabilities add up to uh, 1. So, this is the right p m f. Now, um, therefore, we can immediately compute expected value of y, which is 1. I mean, um, I leave that to you, because now you have the probabilities as you uh, multiply by the corresponding value of y and you add up and get this this. And similarly, expected value of y square is 45 by 27. So, the variance comes out to be 18 by 27. So, now, uh, for example, uh, probability y minus 1 greater than half 
if you want an estimate for this uh, upper bound, then this is less than or equal to expected value of y 1 whole square, uh, y minus 1 whole square into 4, 1 by 2 square, which will become in the denominator will become 4. Now, this certainly uh, there is no, verifi no verification is needed, because um, the actual probability cannot be more than 1, whereas this number is coming out to be more than 1, because you are um, we have put a number 1 by 2 here. Are you okay with this? Because 4 into 87 by 27, this number is greater than 1. So, here I do not need any verification. So, uh, more meaningful verifications will be when for example, I want to say that probability y minus 1 absolute value greater than 1 is less than or equal to. So, this will be variance y upon 1, which is 18 by 27. So, now we will actually compute this probability and show that it, uh, it is less than 18 by 27 to make sure that this is this actually gives you an upper bound. Okay. If you uh, observe that b is uh, y is also distributed has a binomial distribution, a binomial distribution uh, with the parameters 3, 1 comma 3. So, the probability of success is given by 1 by 3 and number of uh, uh, roles are is uh, number of roles is 3. Okay. Now, and therefore, immediately you know that hence expected value of y will be n p. So, 3 into 1 by 3 is 1 and the variance of y will be 3 into 1 by 3 into 2 by 3 n p q, which is 2 by 3. And, but we computed this uh, uh, independently uh, as 18 by 27, which is also 2 by 3. Okay. So, fine. Anyway, now uh, just want to, uh, we, are, we are testing the um, we are comparing the actual computations of probabilities with the Chebyshev's uh, bounds. So, if you want to look at this probability absolute value of y minus 1 greater than or equal to 1. So, you see that here um, y minus 1 greater than or equal to 1 uh, implies that y can take the value 0, 2 and 3, because when y is 0 then uh, absolute value of minus 1 is 1. So, which is equal to 1. So, remember the event is greater than or equal to. Therefore, y can be equal to 0, 2 and 3. Okay. And in that case, uh, uh, this probability will be equal to probability y equal to 0 plus probability y equal to 2 plus probability y equal to 3. And so, uh, we make this computation 8 by 27 plus 6 by 27 plus 1 by 27, okay, which is equal to 5 by 9. But if you compute the uh, Chebyshev bound, then this will be variance y upon 1, 1 square is 1 and this is variance y, which is um, 18 by 27 or 2 by 3. So, you see um, when you compare these two numbers, uh, you know uh, you, you will say that uh, Chebyshev's bound is a loose bound, is a loose upper bound, right, because uh, 5 by 9 is less than 2 by 3. See, 15 is less than 18. Ah, when you compare 5 by 9 is less than 2 by 3. Okay. And then let us see, uh, uh, take another event. So, this is this will be probability absolute value of y minus 1 greater than or equal to 2, which is simply probability y equal to 3. So, we, we, we can use the binomial probabilities here. And so, y equal to 3 would be simply 1 upon 27, 1 by 3 raised to 3. right? Uh, and so, uh, this and this by the Chebyshev's inequality will be variance y upon 4, because your k is 2. Okay. So, this is um, 18 by 27 in, uh, into 1 by 4, which comes out to be 1 by 6. And so, when you compare uh, 1 by 27 with 1 by 6, the gap widens. Okay. This is uh, a loose upper bound by the Chebyshev's inequality. And now, if you want to look at the event probability absolute value of y minus 1 greater than or equal to 0, then we cannot apply the Chebyshev's bound, because this number has to be positive. Remember k greater than 0, so that is required. So, therefore, I cannot compute a bound for this. So, you may compute the actual probability here, but Chebyshev's bound cannot be computed. What I have tried to show you is of course, um, uh, uh, through various examples, uh, how to uh, get the uh, probability required to compute the lower bound by Chebyshev's inequality. So, doing that and then also try to give you a feeling that the bounds we are computing are uh, 
loose bounds, they are not uh, tight ones. And the thirdly, now what we will, I would like to show you in the next lecture is that, uh, apart from computing bounds, it has also proved a very uh, useful tool for um, showing, uh, you know, we will be talking of uh, convergence theorems in the next lecture. And that is where I will show you, how useful a tool the Chebyshev's inequality is. And so, that will be the uh, uh, next.